Weight Shift and Walks, Part 2. So we saw in Part 1 that there's a significant variation in weight during a walk, depending on whether the up and down motion of the body is going with gravity or against gravity. And in fact, we were able to look at uh, direct measurements of weight using uh, force plates. So a volunteer walks over the force plates and uh, their weight is measured in time as they pass over the force plates. And here is, as we saw, what a typical uh, force plate measurement looks like for each foot uh, as the um, we p go through the, pa uh, the contact pose, passing position, contact pose, passing position, so forth. But there's a noticeable difference whether uh, we have a standard normal walk or a slow walk or a brisk uh, fast walk. And what we're going to see is that the slow walk uh, has uh, less variation in the weight as uh, weight shifts from one foot to the other, whereas uh, for a fast walk, um, the pattern is somewhat similar to a normal walk, but with much more uh, variation of weight. So let's uh, look at some data from a slow walk. So just here's the um, graphs on displayed on the screen. So if we look at it in a bit more detail, as uh, the front foot uh, comes into contact with the plate and transfers weight, we uh, reach a plateau, and this plateau is approximately equal to the um, body weight of the volunteer. So if the volunteer was just standing on the plate, they would um, more or less uh, be at this value. And you see that the um, all the way from contact pose through the passing position to the next contact pose, so basically from um, essentially the completion of the heel strike to the beginning of the toe off, um, the weight just stays uh, constant, unlike the up and down variation that we saw in a standard walk. In a slow walk, the weight stays um, more or less constant until we start to transfer weight uh, from the back foot to the front foot, and that happens in a very uh, straight line form, very constant form, and in fact if we add the two curves together uh, we get basically uh, a constant flat plateau for the right foot plus the left foot uh, weight. So um, we don't expect to see much um, variation in the weight in a slow walk, and so we wouldn't see much uh, overlapping action of uh, motion of the hair or clothing. It would um, all of that would be fairly static because there's very little uh, weight gain or loss in a uh, slow walk. Now you should notice that um, when we see a normal walk in slow motion, uh, we notice that that looks different from simply walking slowly uh, because uh, we see weight shift uh, in a normal walk even when it's played slowly. So let's look at this um, scene from uh, Kill Bill Volume 1. So here's the slow motion and um, it's noticeable that that was, now here is walking at normal speed, then slow motion again. So if the characters had tried to imitate slow motion by simply walking slowly, uh, it would not look the same as true uh, slow motion filming of a normal walk. Uh, now let's look at, at fast walk, so let's see some data from a fast walk. Of course, every every walk has a little bit of 
variation, but the basic pattern is the same in, in each case. Uh, so the, um, the time for each step is less, so we see these are uh, compressed compared to the uh, slow walk, but more importantly, we see a lot more variation in the weight. So these curves are going up and down very noticeably, uh, going from the um, heel strike, uh, we get this uh, spike and then a deep uh, dip going through the passing position and then uh, spiking up going into the toe off and into the next uh, heel strike. So uh, when a uh, character is walking uh, quickly, uh, the natural way to walk faster is to increase both the length of the stride, or length of the step if you prefer, and the rate at which the stride is taken, in other words the, the cadence, or how many uh, steps per second. So a uh, typical slow walk, stride length might be three feet, the stride rate might be two-thirds of a stride per second, which uh, would be a speed of um, two feet per second, so this is a fairly slow walk. Uh, for a typical fast walk, the stride length would increase, the stride rate would increase, and increasing both of those uh, significantly increases the uh, walking speed. Now, because both the um, stride length and the stride rate uh, increase in a fast walk, both of these uh, serve to promote greater weight gain and loss. Uh, for one thing, there's uh, more up and down motion because of the longer uh, stride length. So if you take a, a large step, then you drop further down in the contact pose and you rise further up in the passing position than if you take uh, small steps. Uh, furthermore, if you're doing this uh, quickly, then there's more acceleration occurring because the uh, steps are occurring um, with a quicker timing. So both of these serve to uh, create more uh, weight gain and loss for a fast walk. Now, uh, if think about the uh, force exerted by the floor uh, on the foot, so the um, We've already seen that there is a variation of the weight in a uh, normal walk. So let's go back to looking at a fairly standard normal walk and how the weight varies uh, up and down. But we can also consider not just the um, force uh, in the upward direction for the um, floor balancing the weight, but also the um, horizontal part of the uh, floor's reaction force. So uh, going from stride to squash to passing position, that force tends to be upward and in the backwards direction. Uh, from the passing position through the, str through the stretch into the stride, then um, in that case the force from the floor is upward and in the forward direction. So we see that uh, in both of these pictures. Uh, we can also uh, graph this um, backwards and forward part of the force, just like we were graphing the, uh, the weight. Uh, so the, um, from the uh, heel strike, uh, we have a uh, large negative force, so that's in the backwards direction, and that continues on the foot up until the passing position, and at that point uh, the force is uh, zero in terms of whether it's forward or backwards, it's, it's um, neither forward or backwards. But then going from the passing position to uh, the next um, contact pose, the force on the foot is uh, in the forward direction as well as upward. Uh, then we have the 
heel strike, and at that point, that foot is exerting a force in the negative direction on the body, while the foot in the back is exerting a force in the forward direction up until uh, we get to the point of the toe off. And then, of course, the pattern repeats in a cycle. So uh, we notice this uh, variation in the force in terms of the timing of the walk. So um, going from the contact pose um, through the uh, squash into the passing position, as I said, the force uh, on the character is upwards and a little bit towards the rear. And so that uh, slows the character as they're um, entering the passing position. But then uh, the force becomes a little bit in the forward direction, um, going from the passing position to the next contact pose. And so we have a slowing out of the uh, motion um, from passing position to contact pose. So in uh, summary, uh, slow walks show very little weight variation as the uh, weight shifts from one foot to the other. So it's almost a very constant um, total weight uh, going from one foot to the next. Uh, uh, contrast that with uh, fast walks, which have very significant weight variation. And uh, we see a lot of weight variation both because of the uh, quicker timing, so we have more uh, acceleration with this quicker timing, and the um, uh, body moves a larger distance up and down, mostly because of the uh, longer step length. There's a backwards reaction force from heel strike uh, to, uh, from the heel strike uh, of the contact pose up until the passing position, and that causes the um, motion to be slowing in from the contact pose to the passing position. And then there's a forward uh, reaction force from the passing position to the toe off of entering the next um, contact pose. And uh, we see that in the timing as uh, slowing out, uh, coming out of the uh, um, passing position. So this. Uh, there's a lot of information about the forces uh, on the character, but as you see, that um, uh, not only affects the timing, but also all sorts of overlapping actions. So in the uh, next uh, tutorials, we'll look at uh, some of this motion in a walk from a different perspective, which will be uh, thinking about the uh, energy and how the body um, walks in order to uh, comfortably um, not have to uh, expend too much energy in the process of walking.